Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Learn Everyday, Everyday English, English, your roadway to English proficiency. Glad to have you with me today. Uh, we got a special guest in the studio today. If you haven't noticed, kind of looks a little bit like me. Uh, he's been on the program before, but uh, lucky to have him back. We're going to be doing a couple interviews and have these on. Uh, excuse me, there's a fly buzzing around on the program, but um, he's going to talk about his uh, work activities, as we say in English, where he works. He works kind of for a, say, a real cool uh, job or a real cool place. He'll tell you more about that. But before we get started, just want to let you know, uh, be sure to check out our webpage, uh, Learn Everyday English webpage at www.learneverydayenglish.com. There you can uh, check out our podcasts. If you haven't uh, listened to those already or know about that, you can find those on the, all the podcast applications like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Download those on your phone. Be good for you to listen to when you're working around the house, in the yard, driving your car, wherever you may be. We've got people from over 75 countries that have downloaded the podcast and uh, seem to be very popular. And if you like these videos, one, hit the like button, two, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and tell your friends about it so that they can uh, benefit too. But without further ado, which means without waiting any longer, we're going to just jump right in to today's episode. So I'm going to uh, interview my brother. His name is uh, Gerald. And he's going to tell you about his work uh, activities, his work life, which I think you'll find interesting. So, Gerald, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, you know, kind of how you grew up. I guess I know all about that since we're actually twin brothers, two minutes, born two minutes apart. But uh, just tell us uh, a little about your upbringing and that sort of thing. Okay. Um well, we were born in a little town in Pennsylvania called uh, Butler, Pennsylvania. I think it's near Pittsburgh. Don't remember much about it. We moved when we were still small. Our father was in the army, so we used to live uh, in Nevada for a while, uh, the army base, and then we moved to Maryland, the state of Maryland, on an army base there. And then when he retired, we moved to Louisiana. That's where our parents are from. So we lived there about a year, staying with my aunt and grandmother. And then uh, we moved to Houston when we were about 12, I guess. We were about mm -hmm. in the sixth grade. We moved to Houston and grew up there in Houston, went to elementary school and high school, junior high and high school in Houston. And then I uh, went to the University of Houston, and uh, that's where I studied uh, engineering there. Was, we both went there, and Gary studied engineering also. So that's kind of a quick uh, synopsis, as they say, like a short information about our live lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think we've been in Houston since the early 70s, if I remember, maybe like 1972, and... Like Gerald said, we started uh, sixth grade when we moved to Houston. And, uh, you know, I moved uh, up here. I live about one hour north of Houston in a city called Huntsville. But Gerald still lives in Houston. So uh, how do you like? You still like Houston? What's your impression? Uh, I know you've been there a long time. Probably call it home. But uh, uh, yeah, it's home. That's the place uh, I've lived the longest. Now, I like Houston. It's a big city. I think it's about the third or fourth largest city now in the mm -hmm. United States. Yeah, the fourth largest. Fourth largest. Yeah. And uh, it's an international city. you got people from all over the world living there. You can find all types of different foods and restaurants. And uh, I don't like cold. <clears throat> I don't like cold weather. So... Um, even though it's it's hot in the summers, I'd rather deal with the hot summers than the cold winters. So, yeah, I like Houston. There's a lot of things that you're able to do, meet a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice city. 
Let me kind of go back and touch on the uh, high school. Like Gerald said, we went to high school in Houston. It was a private Catholic school, but it was a private, called a uh, preparatory high school, which that means it prepared you uh, to go to college. So I think it was, in that respect, it was a good school. And I think it did have an influence on um, what we decided to pursue as a uh, higher education in college. I got a civil engineering degree, and Gerald can tell you about his degree, but how do you, th- you think the high school that we went to had an impact on uh, your decision on what you wanted to study and major in in, uh, in college? Uh, yeah, I think it had some influence. I guess I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to study in college. I really liked, like psychology and sociology, but uh, you couldn't really do much with that degree unless you went further in your studies and maybe got a master's degree or a PhD. And so I always liked electronics. I guess when we were growing up, we used to build mm-hmm. some um, yeah. radios and other different things like that. We used to listen to shortwave radio a lot. So that was one of my interests. So I guess maybe based on the what we did in high school, the work there and just my interest in electronics. That's why I ended up deciding to go into electrical engineering in college. Yeah, and kind of the same uh, thing happened to me in high school. I wanted to actually study ecology in in college, but we had uh, guidance counselors that kind of helped you decide what to study. And he told me, well, you know, you may like to do that, but it's going to be more difficult to find a job. And I think at the time, engineering was, you say, booming, which means there was a lot of jobs in, in engineering. So he suggested looking at engineering. So I decided to pick the closest field of engineering to the environment, like environmental engineering, and that fell under civil engineering. So that's how I uh, just made the choice to study civil engineering. So in college, I know um, you were studying electrical engineering. Would you say uh, it was easy or pretty difficult? Uh, how would you uh, gauge that? Uh, def- definitely not easy. Uh, spent long nights studying, and some of the classes were difficult. I remember there was one upper engineering class on um, like mathematics and I still don't understand all that they were talking about. It was really theoretical, a lot of calculations. But yeah, it's difficult. But if you if you study, you know, study hard, you'll be able to get through it. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember there was one class. I think we were both in. It was a physics one class. No, physics two. I think about Gaussian surfaces and. Ooh, that was some stuff, and I remember the first test, I think I got like a 32, and some people got 17, some people got zeros, and yeah, I seriously thought about dropping, and I stayed in there, I was able to get a C, I was happy to get that and to get get out of there, but uh, yeah, some of those engineering courses can be pretty difficult. Pretty, pretty tough, yeah. Well, to another question, if you had to do it all again, would you uh, make the same decision and, and stick with uh, engineering, electrical engineering? Or I know we say it with an expression in English, hindsight is twenty twenty. That means once you look back into the past, you can see things maybe more clearly and differently and maybe make different decisions. But at the time when you're younger... You know, you may not have the information that you need or know exactly what you want to do. But if looking back, if high, as hindsight is twenty twenty, do you regret anything or happy with your decision you made to study engineering? No, no, I don't think I would change anything. I know when I was in an engineering program, there's another program that was engineering technology. Mm. Like it was more hands-on. Yeah. You got to build things and... But it's not the same as having an engineering degree. But I was thinking about doing that, and I guess I'm, I'm glad I didn't because it, having an engineering degree, I guess, gives you more job opportunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if true. you only had a technology degree, maybe we'll talk about it. But I wasn't able; I wouldn't have been able to get the current job that I have. 
I okay. needed an engineering degree, so. I know we both graduated, I think, in 1985 from uh, University of Houston. So what was your first job after college, and, and did you like it? Were you able to find a job kind of in the, quote-unquote, we do this in, you quote-unquote, in the engineering or electrical engineering field? Because I know you weren't working at your current job that you're at now when you first started working, so... Um, <clears throat> It took a little while for me to find a job, but I ended up uh, getting a job at this small engineering company, and they sold uh, motors and motor controls and other devices for different um, plants and businesses to use. So I was what they called an applications engineer, Mm -hmm. so people would call our company and say they wanted some displays, counters, motors, and We'd help them pick out the right, um, you know, devices that they needed to fit the application that they wanted to do in their business. So it was actually pretty interesting. I got to travel to different companies and look at their the, the hardware that they were building and help them uh, pick some of the products that we sold to use in in their manufacturing applications. And actually, I. Got to visit NASA one time. They were looking for um, some of our, our counter to use in a laboratory there. So I helped them pick that out. So that, that was really interesting. So I ended up working there for about two years. Okay. So I think that was really, uh, even though it might not have been considered the, the best job, you know, it wasn't with a big engineering company, a big name company. It gave me experience. So because of that, I was able to get the next job that, that I got. So mm-hmm. it, it, was, it worked out well. And I think that's kind of an interesting story about your next job because um, I guess tell people, I guess, where you work at now and, and how you were able to get the job where you're working at now. Yeah, that is a kind of interesting story. Uh, I guess now I'm working at NASA, the Johnson Space Center down here in Houston. So I've been working there 32 years. It'll be 33 years in August, so I'm just uh, really thankful for that. But I guess when I first graduated from from college, I was looking for a job, and I'd still go back to the University of Houston uh, to the barber shop, and I just happened to mention to the barber that we would always go see that, hey, I finished and I'm looking for a job. And so he said, hey, give me your resume. So I gave it to him. But uh, I didn't hear anything for maybe like two years later. Because I guess at the time, NASA was on a hiring freeze. They weren't hiring any new employees. But if you remember, after the um, Challenger Mm -hmm. accident, they started hiring more people. So the barber that I gave my resume to had given it to someone who worked at NASA. So it was like two years later, I I got a phone call from someone at NASA saying, hey, we're hiring new people, so do you want to come in and interview with us? And I said, yes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I went for the interview, and luckily I got hired, so I'm really thankful. So Mm -hmm. I got my job at NASA through my barber. Yeah. And you say the rest is history, and that's a proves you never know, you know, how you're going to find a job, and so it's important how you talk to people, who you talk to, because you never know if you make a good impression, they can help you out down the road, and you have no idea that that sort of thing is going to happen. Uh, so you said you've been working for NASA almost 33 years, so what specifically uh, do you do there? What is your... Uh, a typical day like in the engineer at NASA because I think a lot of people, myself included, we think, wow, it's it's a kind of glamorous job, glamorous like it sounds real good and, you know, you're a rocket scientist and it's real cool and but um, maybe dispel some myths people may have or kind of what is, what's it like to work at NASA and what do you do exactly? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting just because you're dealing with um, items that get go up into space. But, you know, it's just like any other job. You have to deal with people, managers. There's politics and 
time deadlines and pressure and all the things that you have in a, a regular job. Mm-hmm. But I, um, so I, my degree was in electrical engineering, but I, I don't do electrical engineering work per se. I do more what's called industrial engineering. I, I work in the um, safety group for the International Space Station now. I guess when I first got hired at NASA, I was in the um, safety and reliability group, and I was working on the space shuttle program, Mm -hmm. the uh, communications and tracking systems. So our job was to basically make sure all of the the safety requirements were followed and complied with to make sure, you know, we didn't cause any hazards that could kill or hurt the crew or or damage the, uh, the space shuttle. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> no, so it's really kind of a important job. Mm-hmm. And so I did that for um, oh, quite a number of years. And then I started working with the, the Japanese Space Agency once mm-hmm. the uh, International Space Station program started um, getting bigger and bigger. So they have a, a module that's on the International Space Station with other different parts of it. So I was like the um, safety liaison, you would say, like the safety interface between the safety organization at NASA and and the Japanese safety organization. So I was able to go to Japan uh, several times for different design reviews, and so that was really fun. Yeah, Yeah. because then that, well, maybe we talk about in another podcast, I had an interest in the language and started studying that. But so I worked with the Japanese space agency for maybe 10 years doing that job. And I guess now I'm working with the, uh, the safety review panels. I guess we review all of the hardware that they want to fly to the International Space Station. So we have different um, meetings, you could, you could say, different reviews where we examine their hardware and they have to tell us, hey, my hardware could cause this type of damage or, or hazard to the crew in the space station, and we just make sure that the hazards are controlled so the hazards most likely will not occur. So mm-hmm. basically a lot of what I do is review a lot of documents. We okay. review a lot of documents. And another question I guess I have, or maybe other viewers may have, given the past uh, year with the coronavirus, how has that impacted your your work environment? Are you working from home or are you working out of the office? Or Now, I guess probably like most other people, I guess um, they closed down the Johnson Space Center only to people who are necessary. So that's usually people who work in the Mission Control Center, you know, have to support the International Space Station as it's, you know, orbiting the Earth. So I've been working from home for about one year now, Mm -hmm. and everybody in my group has been doing the same thing. So it's actually not that bad. You know, I get to, I I live about 30 miles from the space center, so I get to save on uh, mileage Mm -hmm. for my car, and you can actually get the job done, uh, basically the the, without any, uh, how they say, it hasn't affected getting the job done by working from home. Yeah. So I'm really liking that. So I can don't have to get up quite as early. You know, I don't have to drive like two hours a day back and forth to work. So it saves me a lot of time during the day. Yeah. I think that's a good point because I think a lot of companies now have realized that hey, a lot of work that used to be done in the office, people can do at home, so it may save them money. They don't have to rent as much space or buildings for offices, and people can work from home, and with this all this technology we have in Zoom meetings, I think it's it's become very beneficial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, so you've been working at NASA for quite a while now, and well, the next question is, do you have any plans on retiring, or can you retire? If you wanted to, and do you have any plans on retiring anytime soon? Or do you just love what you're doing and just want to work till you're uh, old and gray, as we say in English? Or? Well, now I guess I reached uh, my official retirement of 30 years. I guess once I 
got 30 years working there. I can officially retire because my age, I reached the age limit as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun job, but I'm definitely looking forward to retirement. And so I'm probably planning to retire in about the next year, year mm-hmm. or so. I had a daughter who's in college. She's graduating uh, like in May. So now that she's finished with school, I can start thinking about um, exactly when I want to retire. So I'm really looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Well, as a retired person myself, I highly recommend it. So uh... Yeah, I know. <laughs> he uh, tells me that quite often. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. And then uh, what do you have any, what do you plan on doing, say, once you do retire? Do you have anything specific in mind? Uh, or just play it, we say play it by ear in English, which means kind of like just see what happens. Or, or do you have anything specific in mind? Um, yeah, I guess, as you know, I guess I've been taking some, online classes through this uh, Truett Seminary to get a, a certificate of ministry degree. So um, I don't know, I don't have any detailed plans, but maybe I'd like to do something as far as uh, with my church or mm-hmm. some ministry. But as you've probably seen, we both like to play music. So I guess one of the things I'd really like to do is to go to nursing homes and hospitals mm-hmm. and just uh, play music for the people there. And I also have a number of friends who are retired who play music, so that's probably one of the big things that I'll mm-hmm. start doing. So between those two things, I think that'll keep me busy, and I'll probably get into other hobbies as well. I like learning languages too, so yeah. um, I'll probably do that. Okay. Well, that's a good point you bring up about you know maybe doing volunteer work going to nursing homes there's always a need out there you know a lot of people retire they say hey i'm bored or there's nothing to do but there's a lot of things to do and for example every wednesday i volunteer at an organization called meals on wheels where we deliver meals uh, lunches to the elderly people that may not be able to get out so it's a rewarding thing, a rewarding feeling, you know, just to give back to the community and help other people. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, a couple of final two questions. Any advice for people thinking about getting into the engineering field? Uh, recommend it? I uh, think it's a good career path? And Yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely a good uh, career path. I guess it's maybe common sense, but yeah, just study hard when you're in school. Mm -hmm. specifically math and science. So just keep working hard and maybe try to do studying on your own. Maybe there's an area that's of interest to you, so you just don't have to study what you study in school. Go buy books Mm -hmm. and read read them after school. That's what we used to do, you know, electronics and things like that that you're interested in. You know, study hard and try to get good grades and, you know, it seems like there will always be engineering jobs that, that are going to be needed. So mm-hmm. that's, I think, a really good field to yeah. choose. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, too. I can say, yeah, engineering does provide you with a good career opportunity. And there's usually, a, you know, find a job and then, you know, looking toward the future for future retirement purposes. It, you know, not everything is about money, but you, you can be able to provide for yourself and your family. So, you know, there's a lot of different options in engineering. Like I was in electrical, Gary was civil, but there's mechanical, there's mm-hmm. chemical engineering, industrial engineering. And I think you can still go off into maybe like yeah. ecology or medical, the medical field mm-hmm. with your engineering degree. So there's a lot of options. Yeah, too. In my situation, I got a civil engineering degree, worked for public works, which was engineering related. But the last 24 years, I worked for a solid waste management department. So I really wasn't using my civil engineering degree specifically either. But that piece of paper means a lot. And I think the the skills that you develop in engineering, like problem solving and reasoning and able to see a problem and come up with a plan on how to address it is is applicable. We say it applies to a lot of other different mm-hmm. jobs and people 
know that you're an engineer, you're good at problem solving, you know, that opens a lot of doors maybe to other areas that you may not realize. And for example, my boss at Solid Waste had a degree in French, but he was an excellent, uh, he ended up being the director of the department. He was an excellent director, a good manager, good people person. So just because you have a degree in, say, one area doesn't mean you may not be able to work and be successful in something similar or even maybe totally different. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's key study hard and think one of the, the, the big things is your character. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, point. people yeah. know that you can are dependable and honest and mm-hmm. they can rely on you. That'll go really far. So it's not just book knowledge and what how much you know it's what kind of person you are yeah. really really makes a difference yeah, that's a good point well i guess we're gonna maybe wrap it up um gerald just yeah thank you for uh joining us today in the studio sure. thank you. glad to be here hopefully you found this video interesting learned a little bit something if you have any maybe comments or questions about uh nasa or anything like that just leave them in the comments below and um, again, be sure to check out our podcast at uh, Learn Everyday English. And again, you can find those on Spotify and other applications. I'll have links in the description below. We'll also a link to the uh, web page. And be sure to check out upcoming episodes. We're going to be doing a couple more interviews about different topics you'll find interesting. So again, hit the like button and subscribe. Hey, well, until next time, we'll see you later on. Learn Learn Everyday everyday English. English. Hey, goodbye. Aloha.